All right, everyone. Young homeless girl in Toronto hit by a train a few years after this interview. Ter and someone who's gone through homelessness. It's terrible, guys. So let's let's um let's hear the story. This is a blind reaction, guys. Tara, we're here. I only read a little bit about the aftermath in the description. So Toronto, you're homeless. Tell me about it. And it kind of sucks. Um, oh, it kind of sucks. It mega sucks, guys. Because... It feels like people don't really care about you. Oh, trust me, like... Guys, I would get beat up as well, guys. I got beat up a, a few times. Bullied. Um... You know. By everybody. Everybody, guys. Like... Not everybody. There, there, there are some that just you know handed you the money. They can like uh, actually buy something at the store instead of like trying to steal it or something like. And yeah, I mean, I tried. I, I, I tried to buy stuff, but I had to steal before because like I had no way to get the food, and um. Eventually, they stopped letting me even just go in the store to actually buy things, guys. Um, uh, so, like, uh, they wouldn't let me go in the store and buy, like, um, you know, a meal or anything, guys. You make me cry. Hmm. Uh, well, it, it feels like people don't care about you, and people disregard you, and people always, like, if I'm trying to sleep in a park by myself or something, somebody will call the cops, and the cops always come. And yeah, the police will come so often, guys, when this happens as well. I've been arrested, uh, you know, three, four times, five times, while just uh, walking on the street, or just uh, being home, like three times while homeless. I mean, they know I'm homeless already, but they run my name and they try to like have an excuse to arrest me, but they don't have an excuse. And all they have is like the fact that I don't have a, a proper bed to sleep on. I don't like shelters because, I don't know, they're pretty brutal. Like, I've been in a shelter before. I got beat up in there. So I'd rather just sleep on the street. Yeah, shelters are pretty bad. I got kicked out from one. And then, and then they just stopped, like, hosting the shelter afterwards. Or a park. And... Um, never really slept at a park, though, guys. I never really slept at a park. I was always scared to sleep at a park. It's getting tiring, but at the same time, like, I'm just used to it now. Yeah, at a, at a point, you just get used to, like, you know, a lot of people being mean, some being nice. You shouldn't have to get used to homelessness. Well, was, I've been homeless for, like, five months now, and sadly, I am used to it. And sadly, the other part about it is alcohol makes it easier. Yeah, it's so it's I'm hard to do homeless sober. Yes, it is, guys. It is. Uh, I was addicted as well. On, the, and um, it's it's what how I got by, guys. I, 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 I was, I was addicted. It is. I mean, you're. you're it was so you know everybody else was doing it as well. You're a young girl with your whole life ahead of you. I'm only, I'm only 25. And I've been like this for, like I said, five months. I just, you know what? I spent my birthday drinking with my homeless friends. Same here. I said, uh, uh, I didn't really drink though. Uh, my, my, my drug and choice was meth, just like the creator of this channel here, guys, that does these interviews. Like, I don't know. My birthday was on July, and I spent my birthday drunk on the streets. And I shouldn't be doing that. Like I have a, I have family in the city, and my own dad is a, is a housing worker himself, but he like disowned me pretty much because I drink too much. But he drinks every freaking day with my little brother. Not, not my little brother. He doesn't drink with him. He drinks while he's there. My little brother's only like 12. How old were you when you started drinking? 
I didn't start drinking until I was 18. Which is pretty weird. That's it. I didn't really. I wasn't a really a drinker. I did have like a few periods when, like, when I was twenty one and stuff, but never got super, super addicted. But you know, uh, I do feel for the ones that are that have been through addiction, guys. Cause I could have started drinking like when I was way younger than that, but I didn't start drinking until I was eighteen. So I had, I don't know, I had like a bad uh, thing, bad experience. Like for me, I went. I, I it started with weed for me, and then I I started like synthetic weed because it was like being sold in the stores and stuff. Even got like a like a asthma like symptoms from doing it, you guys. Experience when I was eighteen, so I started drinking like really bad, but I didn't start drinking really really bad until like this happened. How do you survive out here? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I know, I'll, I'll sit on the street and I'll ask for change. You know, I'll get somebody to buy me food. That's basically the thing I did. I held up the sign, you know, asking for help. And, uh, not every day I get help. Actually, every day I get a little help. But, you know, it wasn't a ton. It, was, it wasn't like hundreds of dollars a day, maybe $20 a day, guys. I just go to sleep. I wake up the next day and do the same thing. It's a every day, it's a cycle. It's like, you know, you wake up, you know you gotta get up and go to um, the street and ask people for change, get them to buy food, and make enough for like maybe alcohol. That's what I did, that's all I could really afford. I also was doing, you know, a little bit of cigarettes here and there, just like her. And then, Come back here, hang out, go back to the street, make enough for more food and alcohol, and then we go to bed. And then However, I wasn't sleeping every night because I was on stimulants, so I, I would just walk around. I would always walk around looking for more money or more stimulants, basically. It, it was, and during the winter, it was so cold, man, I was just freezing for the most part during that time. I wake up, we do the same thing. It's a cycle. What you do to your hand? Um, this is actually for sticking up for my friend, for a friend, I mean, because my friend was like, his, uh, his first adult charge was theft under, and the cops broke his arm, and it's a little fly around me, but anyways, then the cops, uh, broke his arm, and then when he got released, my other friend, like, thought it was funny to, like, punch him in the arm. And I didn't think it was funny, obviously, because that's just, just not nice. Yeah. Punches in the arm do hurt, you know that pain if you've ever been hit there, guys. So, I don't know, I punched him as hard as I could, and I broke my hand. Yep. What's your future like? My future, I would love to be... I would love to go to school, but I have a criminal record. And... I can't get a party. Same here, same here. Until 2012. I want to go to Ryerson because my stepmom works there. She, she's a professor. Wait, I didn't know you can, can't apply if you have a criminal record, guys. I sit there. And I'm under her. She put me, my, me and her other two sons under her name so we get free education there. But... too drunk and stupid all the time and plus like I said I can't get a pardon but I do want to go to school for addictions counseling because obviously I know about addictions so I'm an alcoholic I, I uh, you can't get sober I was homeless and uh, I have 16 years sober the next week 16 16 years Are you serious yeah oh my god I'm I was homeless on holiday well you can do it too. If I can do it, you can do it. So. I'm going on almost my first year, guys, of being sober. Completely sober the whole time, guys. If you had three wishes, what would they be? I want to be... My life to... This is his final question for the video. Good. Okay. Me to change my life. Um, my boyfriend to change his life. 
and my family to love me more than they do right now. Yeah, those are actually my my three. If the if he were to ask me those that question, those would be my three wishes during the time. Oop. But now I'm single. Huh? Thank you very much for talking. No problem. Yeah, guys, we will read the after report of this. Um, the video is not edited because. You know, you can't edit videos after they're uploaded. But we got the after story here, guys. I met Tara in Toronto, Canada. And I reached her, so I've been helping her contact us. Tara is a wonderful, gorgeous 25-year-old woman who, who has lived on the street for five months. Tara tells us a very, very real story about life on the streets. She doesn't like shelters, but she was beat up once. She was hit by a train and killed while still homeless. She's intelligent and funny, just needs some extra love and compassion to change her life. Good news is that at Reed Nurse House filled with is filled with extra love and compassion and will do everything. She can to find Tara some help. Okay, let's look at this article real quick. Killed by a train. And she was a witness in a murder trial, guys. She was struck by a freight train. That's a terrible way to go out. She was also a witness in a murder investigation and has been allegedly receiving death threats about testifying according to people close to her. Believe she'd been hit on the tracks near Young Street, close to a popular spot where people were to drink. Two people are believed to be been with her at the time of her death. Last month, she testified at a preliminary trial. Who's accused of second degree murder? She was reluctant to testify and was warned by officials that she didn't she would be held in custody until the trial scheduled for later this year. She passed her with did not give they did not give her adequate protection for testifying in a major murder trial where, where she's being called a rat and being threatened. They had to literally go beg her to get her a second night in a hotel where she she was and she was testifying for five straight days. And we just wanted to give her the first night she's homeless. She's vulnerable. It's not immediately known if Gardner's death is being treated as suspicious. Well. I just want you to believe it's true. I keep seeing those people express her sorrow. Dang, man. This happened in 2013, guys. Oh, well, this video is uh, 12 years old. Well, that sucks. That sucks. So we can't see, like, a good follow-up like we did with that other video, guys. Just because of this tragic death. Um, pretty sad. Alright, guys, that's the video. Check out Invisible People in the description. Later, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching the second channel. Later, guys.